Hello, welcome to today's Logic Pro Quick Tip. Now, the image you can see on screen is the one that I used in the thumbnail for this video, and it shows the flying faders or wild faders at the end of a mixing console, an analog console. And what you would do with these is allocate certain tracks that you had across the rest of the board, and you can allocate multiple tracks to a single one of these faders, which would then control the volume. And you can do a very similar thing in Logic or any other door. So what we have here is a track I'm working on, and what I've done is I've isolated just the string. So we've got this. Okay, the other interesting thing about this is all of the tracks with the strings in there have got automation on. So they have got expression and uh, the modulation wheel. So changing the dynamics and the volume as they go through to give it a more expressive performance for each of the string parts. Now, if I wanted to go through and vary these individually, that would be a nightmare now that I've programmed them in. What I would prefer to do is just have a way of lowering the volume of them all. Now, you could go through and alter the mix level of each of these tracks by dragging down the actual volume fader, and you will hear that work. So let's pick the bases. I can fade the bases out there. So you do have control over the relative volume, although if you had any volume automation in here, that would be an absolute nightmare to control. So let's assume you've got a track a bit like that, and maybe you were doing it across all your strings. What you can do is either highlight them here in the tracks area or in the mixer, so I can shift click to select multiple ones, or I can command click if they're not next to each other. So let's just use shift click. I've got all of the strings selected. And what I want to do is add a VCA, like we saw in the picture at the beginning, sort of to the end of our mixer. All you do right click in a gray area of one of the selected tracks and click create new VCA. This now pops up at the end. You probably want to give it an obvious name. Maybe string volume or string VCA. If you call it volume, you'll know exactly what it's doing. Now, as I play this through, I will lower Now, if I then set this up with the horns and the harps and the percussion as little faders over here, I don't have to worry about the individual tracks now. I can mix just by using my VCA faders. As it happens, you do not have any audio effects you can add. This is literally like having a volume control. You can't add audio effects, you can't add MIDI effects, there's no EQ. This is literally controlling the volume. As a little aside, there is one thing you can do, and you can actually create a track for a VCA. Why would you want to do that? Well, you might want to change the volume of the VCA itself. So this would change the strings volume as they play. So you can see the track has been placed at the end of the VCA group. I could, if I wanted, uh, drag that down to the bottom. So it is in, at the end of the tracks area now. Notice I can't put it at the end of this master section now. It can go only at the end of the 
tracks section but that's because it is a track now not a VCA. So that's the only other thing you might want to do is add automation to a VCA but rarely would you do that because you are probably doing that as I have done using the automation in the first place. So the automation here is controlling the dynamics as we go through the piece. This I would use just as a VTA at the end and control the volume. I hope you found that quick tip useful. I'm trying not to confuse too many of these things in one go so we'll have a look at another way of controlling multiple tracks next week. Don't forget like and subscribe always appreciated and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.